Ski Planet, the magazine of the art of living of cross-country skiing across the world, is presented by Montaigne du Jura, the official Nordic destination in France. What does a kangaroo, ACDC and a good wine all have in common? I just arrived in the southeast of Australia in Melbourne and headed to Falls Creek in the heart of the Alpine National Park for a new episode of Ski Planet by World Lopets. Tomorrow, I will start my road trip to race one of the most exotic races of the World Lopet family, the kangaroo Lopets. Let's go! For this ninth episode of Ski Planet, Marika will be immersed in the heart of Australian culture, taking us on an exceptional road trip in the state of Victoria. Before heading to Australia, let's make a quick detour to France to learn a little more about the orientations and occupations of the organizers of the Tranju, a focus on 42 years of experience in an exceptional natural playground. As soon as Marika gains a little altitude and gets to the mountains, she escapes into the heart of the Alpine National Park for a little backcountry ski outing. Then we'll be off to Australian vineyards to visit one of the most prominent wine producers worldwide on the program Discovery and Wine Tasting. Let's not lose sight of the main reason for our trip to Australia, to participate in the Kangaroo Hoppet. Marika will take the start of the 42 km skating event on the snowy tracks above Falls Creek. But first, let's join Marika in the beginning of her road trip in her encounter with Australian wildlife. Yes guys, you've understood correctly. Today I have the chance to go to the Hillsville Wildlife Sanctuary. One hour away from Melbourne on my way to Falls Creek to make a unique encounter with koala, birds, snakes and kangaroos. Lucky! is pretty great, but you're 20 you'll go grey, it's a long life when you don't know what to say. Now, let's meet Kim, who is the manager of the Threaten Species Programme. Hi Kim! Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thank you for having us. Yes, of course. I thought it was a zoo. Yeah. So we are a sanctuary and open to visitors, but we're also one of the leading wildlife hospitals in Australia. So everybody visit the park and see what happens inside. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So all of our um, veterinary surgeries are uh, open through to see through glass um, and you can see all the procedures that our vets are doing. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so are you ready to show me the park? Yeah, let's go. Thank That'd you. <laughs> So Kim, tell me why this place is not a simple zoo. Yeah, so Hillsville Sanctuary fundamentally is a conservation organization. And so while we do have animals that are in our care for the, um, members of the public to come and visit and see, uh, most of our work is actually uh, surrounding our work that we do with wildlife at the vet hospital and with critically endangered species and breeding programs for release to the wild. You have a unique wildlife. <laughs> Why, why those animals are so different and special yeah. than all the countries in the world? Yeah, so Australia is the, sort of the land of marsupials and that's what a lot of people think of. Um, all sorts of species that are really well adapted to living in you know, the middle of the desert to up in high in the alpine regions. And you get some really unique adaptations like reptiles that hibernate or that will go underground for years and years and then just pop back out. You have a lot of, of programs mm -hmm. to keep uh, those animals safe. Yep. Can you tell me more about it? Yeah, so at Zoos Victoria we have 27 species that we call our fighting extinction species. They're all threatened species that we need uh, to act right now to save those species from extinction. For 10 of those we have breeding programs at Hillsville Sanctuary where uh, our efforts go into breeding animals for release to the wild or for um, understanding their biology a bit better so that we can conserve them in the wild. So Kim, thank you very much for, for this visit. It was such interesting. Mm -hmm. And I would like to ask you, have you ever been in France? No, I haven't. You have to. I would love to. <laughs> Before going to Falls Creek, I'd like to take you in the earth of the La Tranche organization and we are going to meet Quentin. Great. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. 
France Organisation est née en 1997. C'était la volonté des organisateurs de la Transjurassienne de s'appuyer sur une structure qui soit dédiée à l'organisation pure et dure de la course. Et au fur et à mesure des années, se sont rajoutés la Transjeune. Et il y a 11 ans maintenant, la tranche du trail, ça nous permet pour l'association d'avoir une activité sur toute l'année. Un des chiffres les plus marquants au niveau de transorganisation, c'est 1000, parce que l'association regroupe chaque année 1000 bénévoles qui viennent aider sur l'organisation des trois événements. C'est également 10 000 participants chaque année. C'est 10 villages qui sont traversés, que ce soit tant sur le trail que sur la tranche jurassienne. On part d'un point A, on arrive à un point B, vous ne passerez jamais au même endroit. On essaye de faire découvrir aux participants des points de vue ou des endroits où ils ne seraient peut-être jamais allés et qui sont caractéristiques vraiment euh, du massif et qui, euh, qui montrent et qui mettent en, en avant la, la beauté du, du paysage. L'esprit transju, c'est euh, le plaisir, la convivialité, c'est les, les mots qui ressortent vraiment le, le plus souvent. Au-delà de l'aspect sportif de notre structure, euh, on souhaite également se positionner comme un acteur euh, également économique et touristique. La Tranju a rejoint la World Opet, si mes souvenirs sont bons, quelques années après la création. Euh, C'était important en tant que euh, principale course sur le territoire français de faire partie de cette aventure de la World Lopet. Arriving in Fosquick and I am ready to go for a backcountry skiing session in the Alpine National Park. The landscape is breathtaking and so special. I ask Kevin, ranger of the park, some explanations. We're surrounded here by snow gums. Snow gums are one of the eucalyptus trees which are native to Australia. Um, the snow gums are the only tree that grow at this altitude, so we're at about 1,700 metres above sea level here. Uh, and they're the only trees that will grow in the snow. So they have a lot of um, characteristics or adaptations that have allowed them to do that. Uh, things like they're really bendy, so when the snow falls on them, they don't break, they just bend. Uh, their leaves are quite thick and coarse, so they don't uh, get bothered by the cold, harsh weather. Um, they also, following a fire, you can see some of the trees in the area here, they look dead. Uh, so they've been burnt in a bushfire in 2003, but they regenerate. So they, uh, they have a bulb underground, just like a daffodil. So they just regenerate from the bottom, so they can withstand fire as well. A lot of people uh, go ski touring around here and they can camp in this area. Um, we don't uh, necessarily um, encourage people to camp in the hut. Um, it is cold and <laughs> pretty miserable anyway inside now, but so people ski tour out here. Uh, in summer, this is, uh, uh, the snow goes away and people also um, camp, uh, they hike in this area, so we have a lot of um, hiking tracks as well. So this time of year, three to four months of snow, is a lot of ski touring, and we've seen some of the tracks out here today of that. So she carries some very good form into tonight. All right, top two skiers make it through. We have two French skiers, Pat Paul making the way out of the start very quickly. Up around the first corner, two French skiers, one Australian skier. We want to see some. Are you an amateur of good things? If so, this sequence is for you. As you know, in Ski Planet, we love things that bring people together, and I have to admit it, a good glass of wine is one of them. My taste buds are ready, let's go to Gapstead Wine. <laughs> Hi Michael. Hi. Thank you for having us. Oh, it's my pleasure. Can you tell me why this region is so um, it's so good for for wine industry? It's a um, it's one of Australia's unique regions because we've got um, lots of different climates here and lots of different topography. So there are a lot of vineyards on the valley floors and there's a lot of vineyards on the mountain sides, and I guess. I guess that gives us the ability to grow lots of different grape varieties. So we have Pinot Noir and Chardonnay um, and varieties like that. And we also have Cabernet and Shiraz and Merlot, those varieties. And they all, they all grow well because we've got lots of different places to grow them. So it's quite, it's quite unique like that. So for us, it's very special. Yeah. And what are the characteristics of, of your wine? Um, I think the region mostly has 
um, a fresh flavour. Um, in, in South Australia you get weighty, rich, textural wines and our wines are, I think have a lot more finesse. Um, so they're, they're stylistically quite unique um, but I guess we do have beautiful sunshine so it is fairly warm here but it's not, it's not it develops lots of flavour from the fruit, I guess. That's what's special. So when we visit Gapstone Wine, we are also um, able to taste your wine. That's why We can taste, for sure. Yeah? We plenty, yeah. So we can go now? Yeah. yeah. Good. Good. Good idea. <laughs> Guys, I tasted some of their wines and I really appreciated them. Now, let's have a meet at the Kangaroos Hopet start line. Fantastic. There was a lot of wind, but um, it was so stunning up top, so clear. The snow was lovely, it was fast. Yeah. Hey guys, how are you? The snow was fabulous, the wind was horrendous. I've never experienced anything like that. Great atmosphere there. It's a it's a great community here, and I mean, quite a few internationals coming out for this event. Uh, seeing the kangaroos, enjoying the nice weather, enjoying the nice country, and the nice snow, of course. So, guys, I can't leave Australia without introducing you, Ben, the chief of the race. How are you? There's a lot less stress now that the race is over for most people, but we're happy. It's been sunny, the snow conditions have been fantastic. Everyone's made it through, so we're very happy that uh, we're getting towards the end of the race and we can start preparing for next year. So skiing in Australia is definitely the best idea? Skiing in Australia is something that not many people think about, but the day that we've had today um, is fairly typical of what we have in Australia. So if anyone's thinking about coming out, the skiing's great. There's a range of different cultural activities to do. You can see kangaroos and other Australian wildlife. You can have some great food and wine, plus enjoy our snowfield. So it's a great trip to come. Thank you for everything, Ben. That is, and see you next year, maybe. That is my pleasure. You are always welcome. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Ski Planet, the magazine of the art of living of cross-country skiing across the world, was presented to you by Montaigne de Jura, the official Nordic destination in France.